It's a triple hitter, big game Saturday in the Big East. Spring has sprung over the Chicago River. Sunny skies as the homestanding DePaul Blue Demons play host to number three and championship in the making, Xavier Musketeers. They already have a share. They're looking for their first outright Big East title, which they can claim with a victory today. Should they misstep and Villanova win, they will share the title. And all the other scenarios for the Big East tournament at the Garden next week are completely up in the air. We'll get to some of that a bit later on. Lynn Elmore is by my side. I'm Tim Brando. Happy to have you with us. Boy, oh boy, is there so much at stake today. A number one seed, not only for the Big East tournament, but for the NCAAs for Xavier. Well, like method act, these teams have to figure out what's my motivation and if you're Xavier obviously you don't want to share that regular season title with a team that beat you twice this year and if you're DePaul besides senior day you want to be a spoiler indeed and we've got a couple of great offensive players for you to keep an eye on today absolutely two all-conference candidates and for Xavier Trayvon Blewett sixth in the conference in scoring third and three pointers per game about three a game averaging 22 points over the last four and then that despite just two points against Georgetown on February 21st and Max Struess 11th in the conference in scoring he's averaged about 18 points and eight rebounds over the last three games remember back in December 33 points against Xavier he's a marked man by that Musketeer defense those are indeed a couple of Geico players for you to watch their stats really mirror images of one another a quality matchup for both teams and these players individually have a lot to do with that. And our starting lineup sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee illustrate two of the most improved players for Xavier. Quentin Gooden at the point, Najee Marshall, a lockdown wing player whose offense has really improved. And DePaul sometimes goes as Eli Kane goes. We'll keep an eye on those individuals as well. J.P. Makura, one of the leaders and seniors of this Xavier team, just honored. Now DePaul hopes for an opportunity to play the role of spoiler and the opening tap is controlled to the Blue Demons. Our officials for today's game, Jeffrey Anderson, Steve McJuckins, and Nathan Farrell. Well, the last time these two teams met, you know, DePaul had a 15-point lead and wound up blowing it, losing that game 77-72 in Cincinnati. So, you know, they can see a little daylight at the end of that tunnel if they play the way they want to play. And Struess had a lot to do with that. Maric could not come down with that rebound. Karen Panther gets it, part of that three-headed monster in the post for the Musketeers. And on the other end, Xavier's just been a machine. 11 of the last 12 they've won, including four of the last five. The only loss in their 12-game streak has been Villanova, and they lost that game by 16. Makura rattles home a three ball. And just like that, this kid who's maybe played himself to basketball beyond the collegiate level gets Xavier out to a good start. Kane had the mismatch with Cantor. He also had a layup, but he yes, blew he it. Did. He didn't take it. Cyrus comes up empty. Marshall gets it out to Blue it. What a matchup, Struis against Trayvon Blue. We just mentioned two players to watch. Makura again. This time off the heel, and Struis gets the long rebound. McCallum. And the junior college transfer can't get that one to go. Good defense by McCura. And a pickoff that time as McCura threw it away. Cyrus is on the other end for the deuce. Both teams getting up and down. I mean, this is a tempo that favors Xavier, no question about it. One of the strongest offensive teams in the nation, 16 in the nation in rebound margin, one of the top teams offensively, but the ball is finding some opportunity. Now that quick trigger from Blewett led to a breakaway for DePaul, and McCollum got that one to go, so the Blue Demons lead by one. Just over two minutes gone by here in Chicago. Xavier averages about 85.2 points per game, and the reason is of that quick tempo. And the fact that they shoot the ball so accurately and run their offense so efficiently. You get to take a two. That's a three ball that misses everything. And Maric goes up the back of Makura there. There may have been a root out, though. That foul goes against JP. And there's Dave Lato now in his uh, sixth year. You look at the overall numbers and you suggest, well, he's, he's still not gotten it going. But this facility is brand new. 
His recruiting is looking good. They think that the future is very bright. More of his kind of guys into the program. And certainly were more competitive, albeit they're coming off one of their worst performances at Creighton. He was very upset with his team out of their last performance. Here's Gooden. His shooting has been better, but that was not a good look that time. One of five, Xavier, and they've been launching nothing but trays here in the early going. And that's surprising because of the opportunity to exploit the ball inside. And the ball really hasn't gone inside except this time with Marich, who has been pretty successful over the last several games. Kane can't get it to go, and McCollum is going to pick up the foul over Blewett. And you could say this guy is maybe one of the more underrated coaches nationally in the game today. I'm oftentimes asked why Chris Mack doesn't get more attention. And I think in a lot of ways, it's because he loves and plays and coaches with an edge from not getting that attention. I think he feeds off of that. Yeah, I think, though, you used to be able to say yeah. he was underrated. Uh -huh. I don't think anymore. Again, Xavier, number three in the country, people have taken notice of the job that Chris Mack has done over the years. And Xavier going inside right there, Karim Canner. They had 10.6 rebounds the last time they played the ball. And again, he puts a lot of pressure on the defenses by going inside. He's got the ability to stretch the defenses outside. Cantor comes out for the show on Kane, and Struis lost it. She was driving into the lane, and Aaron Cantor comes away with it. And I just don't understand the ball offensively not going inside. Marich has got Makura on him, and he's probably about five inches taller down low in the post and his teammates didn't even look at him. Gonna say that the ball was kicked. Take a look right here. I mean that's one of those things where you got to be able to find your big especially in a mismatch situation. Well, Blue Demons with four fast break points but haven't gotten anything out of their set offense yet. Teams are combined for one for nine from downtown. The Cure is hit the only three ball to this point. And here's Canner stepping outside right now, taking the big away from the basket. Blew it, lost it. Poor pass. McCallum on the other end has it taken away. Great defensive work by Najee Marshall. And that's going to be a walk on McCure. Sloppy start for Xavier early. Karen Cantor in the lane. As Lynn Elmore discussed, we'll talk more about he and that three-headed monster inside when we return. Xavier leads it by one in a disjointed beginning for their club, but boy, oh boy, have their three low-post players offered versatility to their team all season. Absolutely. They are keys to success, and we're talking about Tyreek Jones, a guy who definitely brings energy and physical presence to his team's attack. You know, he's a big, strong guy inside, and then you have a compliment to him, Karim Canner. He's a stretch four or five. He can step outside and knock down shots as well as take you inside off the bounce. And that type of versatility gives other teams nightmares. And then you have Sean O'Mara. He provides size, high percentage shooting inside, and very fundamentally sound when he gets the ball in the paint. Combined, these guys will give in the middle 24 points, 13 rebounds, and they shoot significantly over 50%. You couldn't ask for a better center by com by committee. Yeah, they have really improved in every aspect. Uh, Chris Mack just goes on and on about O'Mara, who, by the way, is from just outside Chicago, and Glenn Ellen just west of here past O'Hare. There's a foul inside. As you see, the uh, foul spotted inside. And I tell you, when you talk about you talk about um, how well Xavier plays inside. It's this young man's his responsibility. Mike Pegues, an outstanding player at the University of Delaware, played at DeMatha High School. And two pretty good coaches in yeah. Morgan Wooten at DeMatha and Mike Bray at Delaware. Yeah, Mike is one of the best offensive coaches in the college game, no doubt about it. Marge can't get that one to go. Pulled down by Gooden. And the thing about Mike, he understands footwork, and that's what he's taught these guys inside and that's why they're so successful shooting high percentages because they use their bodies and their feet well to get the angle. Bruce picked up the foul. This is a quality staff that Chris Mack has put together. You mentioned him, Travis Steele, Luke Murray also on this staff. As you see some substitutions here, Cantor and Najee Marshall and Makura all leave the game. And O'Mara 
And Kaiser Gates are checked onto the floor. And it's that kind of depth. Yeah. Tim that really gives Xavier advantages on the team. They can come in with guys and not lose anything coming off the bench. Boy, those three balls are just coming up crying off the front rim. This feels like an early NCAA tournament game, as though the players have yet to shake the cobwebs out of the morning as we go into the early afternoon. Each team struggling on the offensive end. Scruggs gets it in. This is another kid, the freshman from Prolific Prep. But uh, Hales from Indianapolis, Indiana, puts it in. Not known for his offense. He's one of the top defenders on this team. But, you know, the last uh, several games, he's been distributing the ball very nicely. The last three averaging almost four assists. And another he's foul spotted. That one will go against Marich, his first. But you see the hustle right there off the turnover and the push coast to coast. As Struggs recognizes the lane, recognizes he's got a big on him that doesn't have the foot quickness and does what he needs to do. Teams have now missed 10 straight trays between them. This begs the question, why do they keep taking them? <laughs> Let's try to go inside yes. out a little the, bit. The iron is really unkind, fellas. <laughs> you might want to take it inside. I mentioned the early start. If you sometimes think about that. It's an 11 a.m. Central Time start. And uh, it really does feel like an early NCAA tournament game. I've had a few of those through the years. There's Cyrus off the bounce. And he gets it to go. It's 7 to 6. A little inside out wouldn't hurt either offense. O'Mara setting the pitch. And a kick out to Scruggs on the wing. Runs down his own rebound. Great hustle. Now the teardrop, and it goes crying off the front rim. And I think O'Mara may have been a bit aggressive, and he picks up his first foul. But you got to appreciate the hustle of Paul Scruggs. He had a glimpse of his quickness and athleticism and get to the offensive rebound. Well, the scene at the Centos Center earlier this week, we had it over on FS1 was that of a championship nets being cut down late storming of the court first ever Big East share of a title and uh, in a lot of ways mentally with the you know the trip to the garden awaiting it this is one of those very interesting scenarios for Chris Mack and this Xavier team playing for something that they've never really played for before and at, at a national level too you know we're talking about a number one seed in the NCAA tournament at stake too. And that's why I mentioned again, you got to go back to method acting and find out your motivation. You know, after that celebration, sometimes you let your guard down because yep. you got a piece of that regular season title. But if you don't want to share with a team that's beaten you twice this year, you got to go out and take it. And, uh, you know, right now, and I looked at Xavier in their warm ups a little bit, and it didn't seem like they had that fire in their eyes per se. Not to say that they can't gain it throughout this game. By the way, Jalen Butts has jumped into the game for DePaul. He's just back from a bout with the mononucleosis and has gotten his strength back enough to play. Picked up that foul a moment ago. And uh, the officials were telling, as you see O'Mara with the layup and a nice delivery by Makura, officials were telling him because of the change of possession to restart the shot clock because they almost let it run down. And if it had buzzed, it had to stop action and, you know, go back to resetting it. Justin Roberts gets it inside, and McCollum can't get it to fall. It's almost as if there's a lid in that cylinder for DePaul. Xavier struggling at the start, but DePaul still trailing. And there's nice little runner. Well done there by Scruggs. He's uh, put some life into this team since coming in for the game. Yeah, somebody has had to pick them up um, from an enthusiasm standpoint. There's Naji Marshall's wingspan almost disrupting that play. The other guys were flat. Paul Scruggs has come out here ready to do battle. He's given them the bench points that they need. Six so far. Roberts with energy giving it up to McCallum. Oh boy, the iron really <laughs> giving DePaul some issues. That's a tough break miss there. Pretty good look from McCallum. Yeah, both teams persisting in man to man. You expect to see some changes in the defenses a little bit. 
particularly on the part of the ball. Tell you, Mr. Scruggs has come in with authority. This young man, only a point the other night in the Providence game in 15 minutes, but he has been heard from seven since coming into the game. He's got half of the Musketeers allotment. And, and that's one of the reasons why, as I said, his ability to shoot over Justin Roberts. The ball may have to rethink their defense. Roberts working against Gates is rejected. And Makura feeding Scruggs. Looking to make something happen on his own dribble drive. Lost it on the way up. Last touch by DePaul. So Xavier will have it when we return. We talk about Paul Scruggs being a defender, but he's demonstrating that he can put the ball in the basket as well. And he's the guy that's helping Xavier light this up. Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. And it's time now to go inside Dave Plato's huddle, sponsored by the LG V30. You got to, we just got to make, you got to, you cannot take an off balance layup. You got to pop your feet to get control. If you do that, you, you make the shot or you get a foul every single time. If not, you're taking an off balance shot, it becomes a lower percentage shot. All right? I keep saying it over and over again. Fellas, and then it puts pressure on your defense. Now you got to be perfect on defense, all right? And I'm yelling over there to talk. We're just kind of standing around and waiting for something to happen. Well, notably, Dave Lato has to talk about the offense. They've missed 11 shots, including six from beyond the arc. But they have gotten the opportunities, and he's just telling his guys to be strong going to the basket. Don't take the off-balance shot. Once again, they've missed the big guy inside. They get him now where he's outside the lane. Only one field goal the last seven and a half minutes. That ends as Struce gets a good look right out of the timeout. But he also mentioned the defense as well. And he, he said did. because the offense is not efficient, you have to be perfect on defense. And as we mentioned before, you know, you expect them to maybe change the defenses up a little bit. Paul Reed gets that foul just into the game out of the timeout. Number 15. Freshman from Orlando, Florida. Xavier, on the other hand, their offense hasn't been as efficient as they're accustomed to. It's been their bench that's really picked them up. As Paul Scruggs, seven points, has got half their points. Well, we've got a violation there, five seconds, and it goes over to DePaul. And that is not what Chris Mack likes to see. He talks so often about his program and his, his guys, they play with an edge. He coaches with that. When he was a player at Xavier, and even before that at Evansville, he was that kind of guy. We lost it. Najee Marshall all over the place again. That incredible wingspan of his. Blewett sets up for three. Well, it really helps to have a guy that can defend the wing like Najee Marshall. Well, he creates offense out of their defense. And live ball turnovers pushing it up the floor. And you got to identify Trayvon Blewett when they're in transition. Kane, another off balance layup. Yeah, that's exactly what Lato was talking about in the huddle a moment ago. And the foul goes against Reed again. Well, when you talk about Najee Marshall and Paul Scruggs, you see him fighting through the screen right there. Just does a terrific job of effort getting over the screen. That's nothing but desire right there. And that's what defense is for the most part. Desire and effort. By the way, that was Trayvon Blewett's first bucket. That triple he hit a moment ago. Makura hit a three to open, and uh, it was uh, just an ice cold rim for Xavier as well as DePaul after that. He's got a quick trigger, couldn't get that one to go. And here comes Kane the other way. Struce drives the pitch line. Well, that's going to be an offensive foul. Player control, it goes the other way. And that's his second. Max Cruz, the one thing he has to do is learn to go straight up. There he's drifting. And Tyreek Jones in perfect position outside the restricted area. Establishes himself. That's excellent help. Uh-oh, did we get a tee to go with it? I believe Cruz may have said something, some magic words. And if so, that means he's got three personal fouls. Because that that counts as a personal, and that is horrible news for DePaul. Oh, 
Well, that's just adding insult to injury. Cannot lose your composure like that. Well, this is a young man that means so much to them offensively, Lynn, and a former Division II All-America, as we touched on many times before. Well, I can understand the frustration. As I mentioned, he's a marked man. That was a good call. I don't think there's any doubt about it as Jones got there. And again, Struess, instead of going straight up, kind of drifted. You know, just got to accept it. Sat out a year after transferring from Division II Lewis. Almost was the national player of the year at that level. He'll have to sit a long time now. All the way through the rest of this half, one would suspect, as Kane takes it inside. And the foul spotted. That one will go against Quentin Gooden, his second. You know, in a way, though, in a very tricky way for DePaul, it might be the best news for them to have Struess on the bench so they can make their offense a little more diverse. Cyrus off the inbounds, can't get it, and Marshall brings down another rebound. But they've got to be able to move the ball, and they got to get it, particularly inside, play inside out with Mark. And it'll go the other way as Robert set himself up to take the player control foul. From Nagy. And that, that's a young man who needs to step up. The last time these two teams played, it was like a coming out party yeah. for Justin Roberts. He put on a show that night. You and I were there for that, and uh, he was incredible. And 16 points off the bench, 8 of 12 from the field. He did have five turnovers, but again, as a freshman, he ignited the DePaul team, helped them get to that 15 point lead. We've had 13 fouls already in this game, Lynn, including a technical and 12 turnovers. It has not been artistic today. It's a grind sometimes when you get late in the regular season. Roberts with the clock winding down and right on cue, partner. He gets his first deuce. Yeah, and again, the ball, if they move the ball, force and challenge the Xavier defense, they might have some success. And with Struess on the bench, a lot of guys get an opportunity to touch and maybe shoot. Boy, Gooden, who had been shooting it so well of late, was outstanding at yesterday's shoot-around. Unable to get his shoulder square that time, and Marge will pick that one up against Madura. And that's two on Byron Marge. Timeout. Xavier up by nine on the road. Fox College Hoops is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Now let's take you inside the huddle. Time to go in there with Chris Mack. Sponsored by the LG V30. Right, you got to recognize when your guys are going to be coming off the pin down and then that five is going to try to step in and post. Front, front, have backside help. Now listen, more, more often than not now, guys you're guarding on the perimeter are going to be more aggressive than they were when Spruce was in. It's like they got to take over and get something started. You've got to be able to guard the ball. Guard the ball, make them use a ball screen. Don't let them, don't get rejected. Okay? Hey, on offense, conversely, I want you to push it, but like we can't start jumping up in the air, charging over guys. Like break them on that end of the floor. If we don't have an open Well, Chris Mack really talking about his defense early and worried about the post play of Xavier, but the bottom line is their post players, uh, DePaul, haven't really done a whole lot. You know, Marge just 0 for 1 from the field, and now with him on the bench with two fouls, they've gotten the top scorers for DePaul and put him on the bench because of foul trouble. And on the offensive end for Xavier, he wants his guys now to really attack and challenge the DePaul defense and make them guard. Well, the only points that DePaul's had in the paint have come on fast breaks. And it has been ugly offensively for the Blue Demons. Five field goals made, six turnovers, nine fouls, 0 for 6 from downtown. Xavier's defense has been pretty good. But I think his point about with Struce out goes right back to what you were saying earlier with Justin Roberts. You've got to expect their perimeter now to become much more active. Well, they have to be. They've got no choice. They've got to be able to challenge the Xavier defense since they don't really have any post presence any longer. Callum on a dribble drive. Not there. And it's tapped out. Gates comes away with a rebound. Isaac Gates' playing time has been shut down somewhat of late because of the emergence, really, of the 
play overall of Quentin Gooden and Scruggs simultaneously. Roberts can't get that one to go. And Gates and Scruggs combined lost it out of bounds, so DePaul will trigger it in underneath their own hoop. And there you see the numbers I discussed a moment ago. It has been a struggle for them, to say the very least. score could actually be a lot worse. Xavier has not been crisp themselves on the offensive end. Otherwise, it would really be out of hand for the home standing Demons. And that's got to be their saving grace a little bit, despite as badly as they've been playing. Yep. You know, they're still within striking distance, and that three couldn't come at a better time. Well, it's the first out of eight tries, and it goes for Eli King. Look out, he is a very streaky shooter. And, uh, one of the seniors, Joe Handel, is coming to the game because of that foul difficulty to March and Struess. Nice move again by Scruggs, who's been dynamite since coming into this game. The most influential musketeer. He's got nine. And Scruggs took what uh, Chris Mack said in the huddle, the heart, by challenging the defense, particularly, again, the mismatch. He's got a couple inches on Justin Roberts, and he took him to the rim very easily. Take a look at the ball without Marich in there. They're relegated to being a perimeter team. But if you're knocking down shots, it doesn't matter. Well, a lot of times, and Xavier had this issue early, you might recall, with Bobby Hurley's team at Arizona State, one of their very few losses this season. Little guards could give them trouble, and Roberts took advantage of that in the first meeting. And he's hit the last couple of shots that he's taken here. Xavier trying to take advantage with Jones being played by Joe Hannell, who doesn't get a whole lot of time. But they just couldn't get the ball to Jones where he could use it. Boy, Tyreek Jones, a monster under there as a rim protector and offensive rebounder. And uh, a foul is uh, against Hannell, his first. But this kid's been incredible. Absolutely, Paul Scruggs, 9.4, 6 on the field. You know, he's been able to play offense with confidence, use his size and athleticism to make stuff happen. And then he demonstrated that he can knock down a three now and then as well. Just right now, 10 of 36 from beyond the arc. But he's learning and getting better with every game. Jalen Butts comes back onto the floor for DePaul. Najee Marshall re enters for Kaiser Gates. And Tyreek Jones at the free throw line. A sophomore from Bloomfield, Connecticut. Vermont Academy. He was a starter for 18 games. He's in double figures eight times. Got his shoulder banged up. Missed a couple of games in the month of February, but he's back. He's healthy, and as we mentioned earlier, gives them the, the kind of size and strength that you like to have to offset the other two pivots that are used in the five spot by Mac. Yeah, all three of those guys, as we mentioned earlier, very complimentary. Physical energy from Jones. You know, the ability to play inside out as we see Cantor coming in. And then O'Mara, as we've said before, his strength inside the paint, high percentage shots, fundamentally sound footwork puts a lot of pressure on opposing defense. And that's got to be one of the things, Lynn, that you've seen in NCAA tournament play through the years. One of the reasons why they could be a real tough matchup once we get into the NCAAs. They, they're hard to scout because they're so versatile. Yeah, I mean, Elite Eight last year, and this is a better team. Absolutely. It's an 11 seed that made the Elite Eight. As you see, Kane knocking down another tray, and slowly but surely as those threes begin to fall, it's a two-possession game. And now you got more diversity on the DePaul offense. Roberts with five. you got Kane with six, and Cyrus with four. They're moving the ball around a little bit and giving other guys opportunity. Roberts almost had the pilfer. Now they have it. And sneaking out is Cyrus, open, and McCallum knocks it home, 25-21, and that gets the home crowd here in Chi-Town on their feet. It is their senior day, and they want to play the role of spoiler against the Xavier Musketeers. Hero almost lost his dribble. Look at the triple team. Good find by Blewett. Marshall off the front iron. Here goes Roberts. A one-man fast break. What a pass to McCallum. Roberts threads the needle. And it's 25-23.
And the sleeping giant has awakened. As we said, more diversity, quickness with Justin Roberts. Now they're starting to put pressure on that Xavier offense. Well, the caffeine may be kicking in. <laughs> Here's Makura on the baseline, fading away. He wanted a whistle that didn't get it. Cantor does, and one. Karen Cantor hanging with it. And Jalen Butts will be the guilty party. Oh, look at Justin Roberts on the push. Finds his man with a nice fundamentally sound bounce pass. And then getting a little jiggy with it. Oh, I like that. <laughs> Other noteworthy games here. Virginia on their senior day goes up against the Notre Dame team that gets Bonzi Colson back into the lineup, which I think is going to, I think after playing one game, we already see a difference in Notre Dame's team. They go into the ACC tournament with a win or two and look out. And UCLA probably on the outside looking in. SC, according to the Schwab, is in good shape. And I think this Penn State team, after beating Ohio State yet again last night in the Big Ten tournament, Lynn, if they can beat Purdue and they played them off their feet at Mackey Arena earlier in February, I, I think they may have worked their way into the NCAA. Uh, at least they'll work their way on the bubble. And when you look at USC, against UCLA last year USC in the uh, first four they would like to avoid that no question they had to win the game and they beat Providence to get to the first round. I'll say this I really like the idea that Jim Delaney was very quick to point out his own mistake in his own mind that maybe moving the schedule up as he did for the Big Ten tournament was was not a wise choice as it turns out though. Uh, teams like Penn State, Nebraska are going to have to wait a long time to find out if they're going to get in. And that long wait could be a, you know, an arduous task for them with their conference tournament a week ahead of everyone else's. There is a slam off a beautiful pass from Scruggs into Najee Marshall. Boy, but this is Paul Scruggs' game right now. He's been given free reign to create. He scored nine points, but again, a nice assist inside. He's been handling a lot of the offense for Xavier. Cyrus off the bounce. They're able now to get the ball on the dribble drive, Lynn, into the painted area and use their athleticism to make some plays. Well, they're getting it inside, period. It's tied from just a fast break. We're talking about DePaul. And that's what they need to play inside out, establish themselves in the paint. And there's a foul. Blew it. After Kane took it away. Just how did Najee get so open? Well, he comes right into your living room here. <laughs> Everybody forgets about him. And, you know, Eli Kane just let him go originally with him. By the way, to your point about Struess when he left the game, how it might work to DePaul's advantage, it's done that. They began the yeah. game 5 of 20 from the floor. Struess picks up the technical after a personal foul which gives him three and they've been six of seven from the four since they've been more diverse instead of hunting and trying to find your leading score which you want to do but they started to distribute the ball more and that put more pressure on the Xavier defense because they got to guard more guys and Justin Roberts has been kind of a catalyst in many ways yes he has he's only got one assist but he's moved the ball around and he's made sure a lot of guys get touches and that's the formula for having an efficient offense. Uh, if you ask any guard going all the way back to Mookie Blaylock and Muggsy Bogues who do you prefer guarding and they'll say someone taller than me <laughs> not someone smaller than me and that's going to be a foul inside the push that goes against Sean O'Mara that's his second. See O'Mara a little bit over anxious uses his right arm the ward handle off take a look at his right arm. When it handles fronting him, he uses that arm to push off and yep. hold off. And you just got to use your hips and shoulders. He usually knows better. Well, he that's is, is about as fundamentally sound as you'll find on a big inside. That's 10 turnovers, Lil. That's a lot for Xavier. A team that passes the ball well, generally protects it well. Roberts wrapping around. Can't get it to go. Runs down the offensive rebound. That one's too strong, and Nachi Marshall brings it down. That was good recovery by O'Mara as he switched off on the Roberts and got a piece of it. O'Mara, great ball fake. And a foul against Bucks. That'll be his third as Makura was making his move. 
And one of the issues that Dave Lato might have is Butts picks up his third foul. He and Hanel have been called upon to play because Marich got the early second foul and Struess is out with three. Attrition could be a problem for them if they continue with their backline players getting in foul difficulty. Yeah, I mean, and one guy who they could count on, but just not getting it done has been Paul Reed, who also has two fouls immediately. He only played one minute. Yeah, and Handles in now for Bucks, who checks out with three. This is a DePaul team that generally plays a lot better defensively when they have offensive success and you've seen some of that here in the opening half as they fell behind by double digits and then really became far more competitive when some perimeter jumpers started going down. Yeah but they're going to go down by attrition more than anything because of fouls if they're not careful. Here's Kane on that dribble drive off of the window and not there it rolled all the way around the iron and out. Makura end to end got up in the air. It's going to be out of bounds off of Xavier. That's he forced the issue that time. Yeah, he was out of control on that one. There are times when JP will do that. He takes chances defensively and from time to time may be too aggressive, but he's the kind of guy Chris Max so identifies with. He plays the way Chris did back in the day. <laughs> he really does. Your favorite teammate and your worst nightmare is an opponent. Paul's got Reed back in the ball game. It looks like they're just going to use all 10 fouls between Reed and Hanel and try to weather the storm with Marich on the bench. And you see the differential right at nine seconds between shot and game clock. Roberts. Mm. Out of bounds, last touch by DePaul. And I think we've got an injured Blue Demon down there. Is that McCallum? He's going to be able to get himself up. I think he's, he's surprised right. that he's not more seriously <laughs> hurt. He did take quite a tumble. And Roberts is hobbling a little bit after taking that jumper. It's like his right ankle. What have happened on the other end when he was trying to defend uh, J.P. Makura on the other end of the floor. 7.2 remaining. Xavier will have it when we come right back. That was the one, right? Hey, John, did you eat half of my bagel? Uh. Speaking of half, if you switch to H&R Block this year, you'll pay half what you paid the other guy last year. So you did. Smoke stream! You're a fake wizard, John. This is a movie set. Switch to H&R Block and pay half of what you paid your other guy. H&R Block. Get your taxes won. Big East Basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. 32 to 26 our score. The Musketeers with the lead. And this is where we believe the injury took place to Justin Roberts here defending McCure. Watches his Look at right hand comes down. Yep. Right anguish there. on his face comes down hard. Oh yeah. my goodness. Yeah, he turned it badly, didn't he? I don't know how he got to the other end of the floor. Well, he's back on the floor now, he's, and he's not limping as noticeably as he was well, he better prior keep, to the timeout. He better keep walking in the locker room <laughs> for a long time. We're right up against the halftime break. 9.9 .9 was put on the clock Tight. as we went to break, so a little more time here for Xavier to work with on this final possession. Tighten that tape. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, DePaul, if they can make a stop here, they can feel pretty good about themselves in surviving that first half. Yeah, it was tremendous foul trouble to their stars. Marge, obviously, as well as Struz. Marshall into the paint. Wave it off. Offensive foul. Player control, it goes the other way. And Joe Hannell, the senior, recognized the play. Stepped up outside the restricted area, took the brunt of that hit, and a good call. By the way, that's number three on Najee Marshall. Not what Chris Mack wanted to see prior to the break. That's the 12th turnover committed by Xavier. So they got two more turnovers than they have field goals. 
By the way, you may be noticing at the center court the logo for the Big East Women's Tournament. That begins actually later this afternoon here in Chicago. They just got the rights to that event in this new Wintrust building for the next three years. That there are the brackets on the women's side. And by the way, DePaul has a wonderful program and has been uh, one of the leaders in this conference for quite some time. So this is a wonderful event and a perfect, I think, location for the women's championship. Val Ackerman, the commissioner, has got to be really pleased with that. Absolutely. But the issue, I think, today would be, and DePaul was offered the opportunity to finish their season on the road because of that, but they preferred having an opportunity to play a home game. <laughs> so the logo change. Well, they put uh, the logo down and before, because you said they just got the rights. They didn't want to yeah. lose them. They, by the way, keep coverage, that logo down. Yeah, by the way, coverage will begin on FS2 tomorrow. By the way, Struess has come in for this last opportunity. He'll trigger in the basketball with O'Mara in front of him with point eight. So as he should be man on the ball. There is time for a catch and shoot. Gates comes away with it and we're at halftime. Well the team shoot 38 percent combined and they also collaborated on 19 turnovers and 21 fouls at halftime. The lead does belong to Xavier. After this break we will join Rob Stone and the inimitable Steve Lavin. They'll have the Jeep Grand Cherokee halftime report. Big game Saturday is underway. The first of three right here on Fox. in the grinds of the first season culminating today a look at our Jeep Grand Cherokee stat comparison and you noteworthy the 12 turnovers committed by Xavier that's the second most and a half this season that they have had the bench points really helping the Musketeers out Scruggs coming in was a key factor but as we move ahead forge ahead to the second season which is in the garden uh, this coming week and Lynn this is these teams are trying to get to a finish line and for Xavier there's a lot at stake at that finish line. Yeah absolutely look I, I think Chris Mack has to re-motivate his team and recognize that you win this you win the regular season outright and that's something to be said and those 12 turnovers that's their per game quota uh, on average and, and that's really a demonstration of maybe a lack of focus maybe coming out flat after the big celebration uh, yeah. in Cincinnati when they clinched a, a piece of the regular season. They've got to put that behind them and come out here with some effort. Notable players sort of up and down through the course of this game. Uh, Scruggs got the job done. Blewett didn't get a lot of help from Makura. Uh, Eli Kane and Struess, look at that. I mean, Kane needs to play as well or better. Struess was taking him out of the game, took himself out of the game with a technical foul after a personal was picked up. So he's going to have to play with three. And as you mentioned earlier, uh, with the other foul difficulty to the DePaul front line, attrition could be an issue for them as we get into the late stages. And that late foul from Najee Marshall gave him three. So he'll have to be careful for Xavier. He's got the ball right now as we open the second half. Well, you look at Xavier really trying to maybe establish themselves, go inside and get Marich, get his uh, third foul on him. This is a guy that averaged 14 points a game, as you see right there on the dump down. Pretty good call by our analyst, Lynn Elmore. You know a thing or two about this game. Well, I mean, look, it is a guy that you want to make sure he never gets started. And Marich, again, averaging 14 points a game, has got none. And it's really taken away from his effectiveness and his aggressiveness. Well, foul uh, re trouble. Yeah. Reach in foul goes against McCollum there on that rebound opportunity. Well, again, you're going to take a look at the drive, and this is the guy that you want to watch when he gets in good position on the drive, and he just stands right in front. Just a nice dump down. A uh, little bounce pass, what they call a pocket pass yeah. by Gooden on the drive. And that's what you want to do. You want to continue to find ways to get Canner on the move. By the way, Blewett and McCure in the first half have combined two of nine from the floor and five turnovers. Not what you'd expect from your two top offensive weapons. Canter off the 
the front iron that time, forced into a fall away J. Yeah, and didn't like the fall away jump shot. Didn't have to. Nobody contested the shot. Kane feeds Marge inside with a mismatch against Blewett, and he lost it on the way up. Boy, that foul. Wow. And there's Makira on the other end. You thinking that was a foul on the other end? No, no, no. I was saying that. I was about to say that foul trouble has yeah. really yeah. gotten into Marge's head. He yeah. pretty much self checked him, himself on that play. Yeah, and then he, on the other end, yeah. I was just quiet because I was marveling at Makira's <laughs> drive. Well, I thought. Maric sort of gave himself up. You're right on that other end, thinking maybe there would be contact. There's an answer on the wing. They're going to need Brandon Cyrus to step up along with Justin Roberts to keep them in this game. Good help there by Kane to try to take the pressure off Maric in guarding care. Yeah, Blewett's shot is really off. He follows it though, stays with it. And Maric hits the deck. It's almost as if, you're right, it's gotten into his head and he just doesn't have the vigor on either end of the floor that you'd expect. Big number 34 in white. Playing with a couple of fouls, and I think Dave Leto senses some of this, and he's taking a timeout. The lead is back up to nine, 38-29. Early moment, second half. We welcome you back. This was the scene on Wednesday night, senior night, and Xavier with a crowning moment as they Clinched at least a share of the Big East title for the very first time. Nets coming down. Blewitz, one of the seniors, of course. And that is just a remarkable scene as Chris Mack at the ladder then decided to tweet. Yes, he does tweet as well. And uh, that's magnificent. It is. But the change in atmospheres from that moment to this and where this club is, where its head's at coming into this game, it's, I mean, there's no denying that it's unique and you've got to adjust to the changing environments and the expectations now that you are a champion but you you got to want more well i mean look the, the demonstration of of love and affection and uh, of pride in securing a, a portion of that regular season championship richly deserved and they they certainly should have demonstrated and celebrated the way they did no one else has won the regular season is in the current alignment of the Big East, except for Villanova. So it's a first for Xavier, but the job's not done. Yep. And I'm sure at halftime, Chris Mack reminded his guy the job is not done. They don't want to share this thing. They want to win it outright. A couple of buses, huge buses of donors made their way here. So there's a good Xavier faction on hand here at the Wind Trust Arena today. Trying to see their Musketeers all the way through to the outright title. That one won't fall from the perimeter for Gooden, who had been shooting it so well before coming in today. McCallum along with Kane, Marich, Cyrus, and Struess, the five on the floor for DePaul. Now there's Marich with the kind of move you'd like to see. Absolutely. And that's the kind of usage that you want to get it inside and put pressure on Xavier's defense. And giving you uh, an opportunity for some high percentage shots, but up until now, the foul trouble is, you know, taking Marge physically and mentally out of this game. Maybe that'll get him back. Cantor on the wing. And a whistle. Did they get Marge? They did. Wow. Just why? Wow. <laughs> why? That's number three. And he's in disbelief too. Lado absolutely can't believe it. I mean, Canner, good shooter, but he's a 32% shooter out there. Why? Look at his yeah. hand on the elbow. The ball that was is already released. Totally unnecessary. That's just a lapse in concentration. The timeout a little earlier was because of the way he handled or mishandled the ball in the low post. It was clear he was crying for a foul and didn't get it and lost his concentration and I think coach Leto called the timeout as a result. Yeah, and that's what I said. Marge has been taken out of the game mentally as well as physically. And you thought that last move under the basket, you know, sweet baseline mm -hmm. reverse layup would get him back into the ball game only to you know for him to fall prey to you know lack of concentration. And the options in that post area with O'Mara, Tyreek Jones, and Karim Kander. O'Mara back on the floor does make it more difficult. It almost seems unfair. Maric is having to deal with three different guys, but you have to fight through it. That 
pass from Kane was a laser and it got past him and the turnover. Man, I don't blame you, Dave. Oh. <laughs> that look hard to figure. That, that picture is uh, worth a thousand words. It is and frustration. First and turnover by Kane, by the way. And the frustration is these are good players. I yeah. mean, it's not like Eli Kane is not a good player. But you can't afford to make mistakes like that. The defense on the perimeter has been good. They held Makura down, blew it down. Cyrus. Not there. Pulled down by Naji Marshall. Out to J.P. Makura. Great defensive work there. Really well done by Kane. And I think we may have an overrule on the out of bounds. It is going to go on a tie ball, and the arrow is to DePaul. Nice job there. Just Kane just waited for Makura to commit and did the rest. You know, the Big East has always been about toughness, and, you know, I just think that New York City sort of personifies that. If you don't bring that toughness level, you're going to be going home really quickly. So I don't think there's a conference tournament more special, more unique than the experience that our guys get when they head into Madison Square Garden and play the Big East tournament. There's nothing like it. Indeed, the mecca of college basketball in the month of March. Madison Square Garden, world's most famous arena. And this is the setup. Of course, it could change. Providence, by the way, is up on St. John's by 10 as we speak. Xavier, of course, would harness the number one seed by moving forward. Regardless, today, if they get the victory, Chris Mack will be sitting atop. Yeah, Chris Mack speaking the truth yeah. about my city. <laughs> Toughness. That's the way we learn how to play on the playgrounds in New York City. Nice job there by Scruggs. Just total anticipation. O'Mara running the floor, but a little bit out of control that time. He'll pick up the player control foul as Struess, with the three fouls, stood fast and took the uh, hit. Talk about putting your body on the line. It's a nice job there, but Struess just being smart. He saw it all the way. O'Mara never really saw the path. He was looking for the ball and figured he'd pick up the path later. But Struess was right in his way. I'll be across the bridge, but I think I may come over next week just to go to the barbershop. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Brooklyn, Brooklyn's New York City. Also, I understand. I'll be across the bridge. Right. I'll come by and see you guys. I will. <laughs> I love the barbershop conversation. That's where I was born and raised in Brooklyn. Kane. Almost threw it away. McCallum regathered. Spacing is not good. That's why they can't get it inside. Callum forced into a tough shot there by that Xavier forward wall. And we talked about the defensive team, Marshall and Scruggs. That's part of Xavier's best defensive unit right there. You saw it. Why? Lead is seven. Just over five minutes gone by here in the second half. Tim Brando, Lynn Elmore, happy to have you with us. Two more. Big East tilts to come your way today on Fox. Marich, nicely done. Little jump hook baseline. When he takes his time and he's focused on playing the game instead of other things that are going on around him, Marich Mar Mar could be a pretty good offensive player. Averaging 14.7 rebounds, shooting 55% from the field. Brad transfer from Northern Illinois. Scruggs goes right past him that time. Good penetration. By the little guy. He has really come on strong today. He's got 11 points now. Well, smart play on both ends. Scruggs recognizing March and foul trouble took it right at him. And March utilizing some discretion, you know, just put up a token resistance not to get in foul trouble because he's needed on this end. Cyrus. Right into the chest of Najee Marshall. That's the way to attack a great defender right there. Take it right to the chest. Yeah, I mean, and that's what's going on right now. Both teams are starting to challenge the other guy's defense. Instead of settling for threes. Not seen the best of JP's game today or from Blue. Others are having to step up on the offensive glass. Blue, it stays with it and we'll get to the line. That's just 
dominating the offensive glass. That is want to right there, no doubt about it. Cyrus gets the foul. Well, Cyrus obviously with the effort going strong on the other end. He draws the contact, still able to get it up there. Unfortunately, doesn't get a call. But that's the kind of effort that the call needs offensively. Kaiser Gates checks back into the game. Najee Marshall sits down. Remember, he has three fouls. So they're going to be careful with him. They need his defense, particularly late in the game. There you see the career ranks for Trayvon Blewett. Boy, what an outstanding talent he is. Has improved every year over the four year period. You know, gone from a pretty good shooter to an outstanding offensive player. Pass for Elaine Sato for three point shooting efficiency. Yeah. All total made, total made threes in his history. Elaine had a wonderful career, too. Take a look at O'Mara really battling March in front of him. And that's what gives March an opportunity to offensive rebound, and he fumbled it. Speaking of fumble fingers. <laughs> That pass took a long time to get to Blewett, but it doesn't take long for him to launch the shot. That may be the strength of his game, the quick trigger, and the lead is 10. Kaiser Gates had an opportunity to shoot the three, but he fumbled it. His loss obviously blew it in Xavier's game. Foul will go against Scruggs, an armbar there. Take a look at the fumble right there. Didn't have the opportunity. And just a little bit of penetration by McCure pulled the defense in, and he found his running mate. You see the number of games you got to be available to go. That three point number that got him to first place past Sato that we mentioned a moment ago. 138 games, 132 starts. That is a long college career. Yes, it is. Cyrus. Well, this kid remains hot, keeping. Along with Justin Roberts, who came into the game earlier, these two are keeping the Blue Demons in it. And what Roberts is demonstrating is that, I'm sorry, what uh, Brandon Cyrus is demonstrating is that there's a future for DePaul, and he's part of it. Blewett gets the foul, 47 to 39. Big East basketball is sponsored by Jeep Grand Cherokee. Tim Brando, Lynn Elmore, 47 to 39. Xavier looking to clinch their first outright Big East title since joining the league. And here are Howie Schwab's projections of Big East teams. Providence still with a lead against St. John's right now. You see Creighton, seven, and, and really playing at a higher level right now, no doubt about that, after the win against Villanova. Providence with that 11 seed projection. Uh, May put them in the first four, something they had to experience last year. Correct. 11 and 12 seeds usually find their way to Dayton for the opening round on Tuesday nights. There's Blewett again right over Struess. Look out if he gets warmed up. And the lead back up to 11. Nice pass inside. Great running up the floor, too, by Reed. And Struess found him. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing DePaul's future right in front of us. Be it Brandon Cyrus, be it Paul Reed, Eli Kane. And the cavalry is coming. Quality facilities will help you with recruiting in Chicago. And Cyrus drains another tray. And right away, looking to the bench, Karen Cantor will check in on the next dead ball along with Quentin Gooden. Blewett has the last eight points for Xavier. Man, what a luxury to be able to count on an All-American like that when nobody else seems to be working. Yeah, he's <laughs> in rhythm now, isn't he? I would say yeah. more make, than rhythm. <laughs> make that the last ten. He's scorching right now. Symphonic. <laughs> now there's a bump by Tyreek Jones. We know when you've been fouled by Tyreek. <laughs> <laughs> He sort of got that Wes Unseld capability when he steps out to give you a little nudge. Yeah. Love yeah. tap. He, sends he used a to message. call that right back in the day. He sends a message. <laughs> no question about it. <laughs> Be interested to see, Lynn, if Struess gets his act going. It took Blue it a while. Remember, he's playing with the three fouls. He got that technical in the first half. Had to sit 
only the last nine minutes of the half. Well, they've done, they've done a good job of getting the ball out of Scrooge's hands. He's using the high screen. All of a sudden, you see the double emerge. He has to give it up. Kaiser Gates on the floor. Here's Cantor working on butts. Poor pass that time, and Kane steals it. And Max Struz has got to face the best defenders on every team, and even more than the best, a couple of the best. And you almost feel sorry for him, but yet, you know, despite that, he's been able to average 17 points a game, six rebounds. He gives you the effort every night. I, I love his game. I really do. But a little like Maric, I thought he took himself out of the game with his emotions in yeah. the first half after he got that uh, personal foul and then the technical that came shortly afterwards. He's a whale of a player, though. Again, it's Nachi Marshall who will give you nightmares trying to check him. Kane off the bounce. Too strong, and it's pulled down by Marshall. Length at the floor, too strong for Cantor. Poor pass, and Nagy says, my bad, right away. <laughs> Chris Mack was about to take his jacket <laughs> off and throw it down, but thought better of it. <laughs> he said, oh, that's a freshman. Okay, I got it. <laughs> but some uncharacteristic mistakes being made by Xavier that allows the ball to stay in this. Struce a step back three. And all it takes is one or two mistakes yep. to get the Blue Demons ignited and Max Struce in particular. That's his first tray, Lynn. He's one out of six from downtown. And a little bit like Blewett, once he gets in rhythm, he can absolutely become lethal. So now an 8-2 run for DePaul. Gooden gave up that shot. Oh, oh, boy. Boy. But Trayvon is game on. But there is somebody who does oh. want to shoot. Oh, oh, oh. There's a reason that first name is Trey. And Vaughn, boy, he is incredible. He's got it up to 20 right now and the lead up to eight. 15 of his points are in this half. Well, I've always said it. Whew. Blewett does a terrific job of getting feet set, shoulders square no matter what position the rest of his body is in. And that quick release, if you're not there by the time he catches it, it's too late. He just does a terrific job of getting himself ready to shoot. All right, you're going to see him right there. And he's going to have an opportunity just to set his man up, utilize the screen, a little push off. But now watch him, he moves without it so well and his teammates good and passed up that shot in order to get blue at a better shot you know in that game we had with uh, DePaul and and Xavier uh, back on December the 30th it was the only game Lenny didn't start this year after the game was over Chris Mack had a conversation with him he had been late to a meeting and he just said to him hey you know this is it for you this yep. is your year we need you all in and he has been responding ever since. Struz can't get that one to go. Blewett brings it down. Well, Xavier, an outstanding rebounding team. First in the Big East in defensive rebound percentage. They rebound 76% of the opponent's misses, and that's pretty darn good. Justin Roberts gets his first foul. On the flip side, DePaul is supposed to be the best offensive percentage, offensive rebounding percentage. They rebound a third of their misses. Haven't really been that successful today. They rebounded only three of their considerable number of misses. Cantor off the nice dish. And the lead back up to 10. 11 in the game for Karen Cantor. And we're at a crossroads now for DePaul. Down 10, you're either going to play for something or you're not. And offensive foul against Butts. That's four on him. We've reached the eight minute timeout. We'll see what lies ahead for that team with little to play for when we come back. Fox College Hoops is sponsored by Progressive, your first round pick for car insurance. 
57-47 our score. Xavier with the lead and our big game Saturday continues next. A bubbleicious matchup. Creighton taking on Marquette. Golden Eagles really need to get something done today and then maybe in the conference tournament. Georgetown will then take on number four Villanova. Big East basketball reigns on Fox today or you can stream it live on Fox Sports Go. And to look quickly at those standings, you see where Marquette is. A, a victory today could pull them even. Wojo's team has been minus some inside play this year. One of the best shooting teams in the country. And of course, we know how good Creighton is and how well they've played lately since the great win last week at home against Villanova and followed it up with their demolition of DePaul. Yeah, Creighton's so dangerous because of the pace in which they play. And Marcus Foster, obviously, just an unstoppable offensive force. Cantor is trapped. Nice move out of the timeout defensively by DePaul. Struce all the way with a finger roll. Yeah, good decision by Struce on the drive. As Tredarius McCallum comes up a little gimpy, and the officials want to wipe the perspiration off the floor where he hit the deck. JP McCura back in the game. and uh, But this is interesting because, I mean, Take a look at where he falls on the floor, kind of puts the perspiration on as a nice drive by Struce. But the Paul, only four points in the paint in this half. They've been able to do it from the perimeter to stay within striking distance, still down eight. But to do so without getting that many high percentage shots, it's kind of amazing. Well, guys like Gooden, by example, who've really been shooting it well, and Makura as well have not been delivering so Trayvon Blewett has just said okay it's my time I'm going to take the rock and do something good with it and that's an unforced error by O'Mara. That's number 16 as far as turnovers and that's one of the reasons why DePaul is able to stay in the game and one of the reasons why Chris Mack is frustrated but he shook it off trying to remain positive. You know he's going to have a lot to work with as a coach even if they do win the outright title today because this has not been the kind of performance that you would be that excited with from an offensive standpoint particularly 17 turnovers on the game but again that's mental I think they came out kind of flat remember they had the big celebration oh, yeah. in Cincinnati they caught a piece of it it's hard to recapture that emotion and come out here fired up I think down deep all coaches love to have a little ammunition to work with psychologically when they go into the second season and he'll have that after today's performance as we see after the foul Cyrus at the free throw line blew it by the way got it his third no longer will they have to go through method acting and find out what's my motivation <laughs> yeah their motivation will be right in front of them to win a Big East tournament championship and to go as far as they can in the NCAA tournament well I'll tell you Cyrus the kid from Lalamure by way of Ontario has been fantastic today. This is a career high tying performance. And you mentioned it earlier. We're looking at the future of DePaul. And Absolutely. It's, it's bright. It is. Gooden on a blow by against Struess, and he's going to get his fourth foul. Good isolation op opportunity there to help get that fourth foul on Struess. With six and a half to play, he'll just have to be careful. Yeah, I mean, you got no, Dave Lato has no choice right now but to leave Struce in. Two possession ball game. You got an opportunity, and he's got to play smart as a junior. Gooden just hasn't fallen for him. And uh, on the block out, do we have another one against Marich? Looks as though we may. And we do. That's his fourth. He must have been rooting out. Xavier with his derriere or maybe a discard with his elbow and they're going to look at this as a possible flagrant one. Check this out. Anything above the head right there that elbow. We shall see. Yeah trying to forearm I mean it wasn't something that he did with with malice. It was just trying to block a guy out but nevertheless you're strictly liable if you get somebody with Forearm, elbow above the shoulder. Yeah, and there it is, right at the neckline. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be a call. Yeah, that should be an F1. 
By the way, that's the sixth team foul on DePaul. By the letter of the law, you could certainly call that an F1. Jeffrey Anderson, Steve McJunkins, and Nathan Farrell taking a look, a long look at it. I agree with you. There was no malice involved. The successive. Yep. And again, this is always subjective for the officials. Trying to block out. Oh, you got him in the chest. Started in the chest and then kind of slid up around the neck. And so by the maybe, way, maybe it will not be called a play. And that's what they're discussing right now. Yeah, I think that's what, what that's think? about. Well, I don't know. I yeah, think. well, it is subjective. Yeah. Uh, and that's I've, seen, I've seen that called an F1 before, and maybe less than that called an F1. It just, again, comes back down to the trio of officials and what they decided as a unit. Well, that's why they changed so-called intentional foul to flagrant foul to try to take intent out of the mix and make it less objective. We're going to get a, a briefing now. Flagrant one on March. Two shots on the ball underneath. So yeah, they, they did decide to go with a flagrant one, and, and you can see Dave Lado not at all pleased about that. But I'm not, I'm, but not, again, I'm not surprised. It, it takes, again, it takes the subjective nature out of it, gives a rule that says if it's above the shoulders, you're strictly liable. You know, whether there was malice intended or not, and, and I, I know no malice is intended. It was just an attempt to try to block, blew it off the, off the glass. And you see the shoulder goes up to try to hold them up. And by the way, the uh, and that and that, but that's again, that's excessive. Right. You got to turn and use your body. If you're going to do that, get them down lower. Right. And then turn your body and make contact with your hips. Players, by the way, and blew it as one of them, have been taught also because of the F1 and uh, anything above the shoulders to to go ahead and be a method actor <laughs> and uh, and fall back a little further to help induce the F1 which I, he I'm did. Not, I'm not sure he had a choice in that one. <laughs> but it has been taught we have seen it. All right so the two shots made plus the ball blew it by the way with 22 points 15 in the last seven minutes of this game. Makes it an eight point lead for Xavier they're going to try to be more deliberate use some clock to see the weaves and the movement without it. Great play by Kane just to knock that one away. 16 left on the shot clock. He got into the passing lane there. Xavier is uh, plus 10 at the free throw line and they they do that every time they win the game at the free throw line time and time again and one of the best free throw shooting teams you'll ever see and that's a walk by Marshall and for DePaul a break because that could have been a four or five point trip after the F1. Yeah I mean that's one of the things that makes Xavier's offense so efficient they challenge defenses consistently and in the Big East number one in free throw attempts. You know they have a plus seven advantage on free throws made. They make approximately 19 per game, and opponents only 12. Pick and pop for Marich is a little bit late to get it. Kane looking to negotiate. There's Struess on the top. He gives it up to Cyrus. He's been hot. Off the heel this time. Marich comes away with the offensive rebound and gets it back. Nice play by the big fella. The Young man from Croatia has played uh, in what has been a very frustrating afternoon, but trying to stay on the floor with four right here. Great pass. Great pass for the easy one there. That's what they do so well. Pass out of the post, and you see the beneficiary, Gooden, there. Well, the anticipation by O'Mara that the double was coming. Kane didn't come quickly enough. You either got to come right away or you stay. Kane! Oh! The iron kind! And it's 61 55. That one hung on the heel for quite some time. Well, let's see if Xavier can duplicate what they did in the last trip down, get it inside, and then defeat the double team. And Kane with the arm bar is going to pick up the foul. And we talk about Eli Kane. He's a terrific offensive player. Hasn't really had a chance to demonstrate it this year. Just 35% from the field, averaging 12 points a game. But that's because he's been pressed in the service to be a point guard as well and have point guard 
instincts, which that's really not his game. And sometimes you see the wheels turning, yeah. and he's not instinctive when he plays the game. I'll tell you, I think maybe thinking too much. I think he's grown a lot since we last saw him here against Northwestern. Remember that game? Yeah. I, I thought that day particularly he struggled with when to maybe call his own number and when to facilitate others. And uh, you know, to his credit, I think he's improved in that area. Yeah. In the latter stages of the Big East season. I mean, look, he's in the top 10 in assists. He's also had 19 double figure games coming into this one. And he's got just a shade under a, a two to one assist turnover ratio. So for a guy that's been pressed in the service, not a natural point guard, he's done a pretty good job. And it's only going to make him a better player, maybe as a Justin Roberts really adapts and becomes the point guard for this team. McCallum can't get it to go, and it's pulled down by Kaiser Gates. And how many times have we seen Xavier with terrific blockout? You're nothing but black shirts around that rim forcing DePaul to reach over them or not get a hand on it at all. 14 more rebounds for Xavier in this game. And again, that's and why DePaul. that's why they have the best defensive rebounding percentage in the conference. Blew it. Not this time. Struess. Skies for the rebound. Cyrus off the bounce. Yes, sir. And it's 63 to 57. Xavier trying to get that outright title. Not always easy. Today it won't be artistic, but the job is not done yet. Rob in the A-10, they've not had an outright championship and to get one and clean one in the mighty Big East would mean ever so much and help secure the potential of a number one seed on Selection Sunday. And our game reset is sponsored by SoFi Rethinking Personal Finance. And you saw it, the double bonus is in play and the bonus on the other side as well with 348 remaining here at Wind Trust Arena in Chicago. And you also see J.P. McCurr grabbing his elbow and his hand his wrist something happened to him earlier and when he got to the timeout he was worked on by the team physician I wonder if the Paul saw that <laughs> Gates not there off the front iron Lost his dribble, saved by Cyrus. Struess pulled down by O'Mara. Boy, a lot of time taken off that clock just to settle for that jump shot instead of, again, putting pressure on the Xavier defense. All they had to do was raise their hand. And I expect Xavier right now to take time off the clock as well. But they'll do it intentionally as opposed to DePaul that kind of wasted a lot of motion there not to get a good shot. Well, nine times this half DePaul has closed within five or six points Lynn but they've never been closer than five. And that's the thing that separates a lot of teams the ability to execute and DePaul just hasn't demonstrated their ability to execute on a consistent basis. Kane with a rejection. Well, this is their opportunity. Get over the hump if they can cut it to four or three. Yes, and one. Eli Kane. No sooner do I say they haven't been able to execute <laughs> yeah. does Eli Kane take it upon himself to make it happen. First, he does it on the defensive end with a terrific block. And there, offensively, he just, again, takes it upon himself, goes right at Sean O'Mara and draws the foul and the harm. Well, if they can convert this three point play, then it really will get interesting. Two and change remaining. Eli Kane brings them to within three. And here's where it's got to kick in for Xavier. What's at stake for them? I mean, this is history. This is program history at stake for Xavier. McCure is clearly playing with a bad back. He was nursing it during the huddle a moment ago. 
Comes up empty and a foul the end result. And it's one and one time on the other end. JP gets his second. And slow to get up is McCallum. It looked like he got scraped across the face as uh, Makuro missed the shot and then tried to get the rebound. And McCallum, a 61% free throw shooter. You know, as a senior, these could be two of the biggest free throws. Oh, my he's, goodness. He's shot in his career. Well, he's one of those guys in. As far as senior day activities they wait here until after the game is over to have them but for this young man a junior college transfer out of Myrtle Beach South Carolina it could mean everything to him came here by way of Indian Hills Community College. Oh the iron <laughs> so very kind to the home team. <laughs> And you talked about it earlier, Lynn. If you're involved in competitive athletics, the opportunity to play spoiler for a team like DePaul, oh, yeah. this could be a crowning achievement for them. Absolutely. That's that's got to be their motivation. It's down to one. A seven nothing Blue Demons run. You want to be an outright champion? Well, now's the time to play like you belong. Nice Great cut door. by Makura and a fantastic dish. Mom's Sunday best from O'Mara. Brandon Cyrus got victimized again, being overly aggressive defensively. Fourth assist for O'Mara. That was a beauty. Here's Struz playing with four against Najee Marshall. Needs some help. Throws it away. He was looking for McCallum as a cutter, but Najee Marshall was right in his kitchen. And, and Struce, you don't throw that ball until you see the white shirt. You can't anticipate that because of the terrific defense of Xavier in their length. Yeah, but a tough day for Max Struce. That's his fifth turnover. Huge defensive sequence here for DePaul. One possession ball game with about a minute three left. Another back door that time Cyrus read it. Pick and roll and Marks got in the way. Struis with the loose ball. Has it knocked away but right into the hands of Cyrus and it's knocked away by McCure and company. Well, Gooden good. was down there with him too. That was a block by Marshall. Wow. Outstanding block by Marshall. Look at Dave Lato on the floor. <laughs> telling these guys to back off. We still got an opportunity. Now oh, those arms of Najee Marshall, that great length. He and Struce, by the way, are having some conversations. They're going back and forth, the two of them. And there's a timeout. Marshall, 11 rebounds in this game. And this, as you mentioned, was an incredible block by Najee Marshall. Well, here's the bounce pass going up and Marshall just does a terrific job athleticism length and timing and it's definitely not goaltended and we're going to take a look at Makura right here he's going to do a good job obviously of being able to step up and just go right around the screen and just a terrific job off the screen and O'Mara finding just enough daylight between Cyrus and Makura to get Makura the ball. And here's our SoFi game reset. Rethinking personal finance. You see the foul difficulty and circumstances. Possession arrow with Xavier. And isn't it typical though when they absolutely had to have it. They got it by way of a great backdoor cut and pass. This Xavier team that's their calling card. Execution. Arguably the best. Yeah and the best passing team. I've seen in college basketball this year. Well, 17 assists per game, but offensive execution, you know, they've been in the top five in just about every major statistical measurement. Only five to shoot and a turnover. Wow. Big break. 16.3 left, the shot clock off, and a chance to tie it on this possession for the DePaul Blue Demons. They do have a timeout remaining. I don't know who has to take the weight for that. It's Gooden because he threw it too hard, or O'Mara because his hands weren't up ready for the pass. Well, as good as they pass it, this is a season high 20 turnover day. 
for Xavier. It has not been artistic. Gotta believe it's too early to foul, right? You wouldn't wouldn't do that at this stage, even knowing they need a three. We'll have to wait and see. Well, you gotta get them, let them get it into the front court. But you gotta make sure that they're not elevating to take the shot. Spruce and Cyrus have been outstanding. Kane, you know, is a willing shooter. Here he is from downtown. Off the front rim. They have time. Struce for three. No. The Xavier Musketeers are the outright Big East champions for the very first time. Couldn't get better opportunities if you're DePaul. It was right there for him to tie the game, but once again, when it comes down to execution down the stretch, that's what separates Xavier from most of the teams on the offensive end. Well, this was a root canal for <laughs> the head coach. You know, Chris Mack says this is not a vintage performance, but boy, oh boy, will he take it. Well, they got the opportunities. They got some looks. That's kind of way out of his range. But then the rebound by Cyrus and giving it to Struce, that's Struce's shot. Take a look, him getting the opportunity, Marshall right there to contest. But that's that's Max Struce. Just living in the moment with the conference tournament coming up, Lynn, and you see the anguish from DePaul. Given how close the Blue Demons played them in both games, having had a lead and then losing the game on the road, and you see Chris's reaction good for him. You, you'd have to think they would not want to play DePaul in the upcoming conference tournament because the Blue Demons have been a tough out for this Xavier basketball team. But they claim their first ever Big East conference championship under Chris Mack. And the number of fans that made their way here from Cincinnati and Chris's uh, wife, Christy, and daughters, Lonnie, and Haley and son Braden, part of a basketball family. You know how excited they must be. And this contingent, two buses full that made the trip from Cincinnati. You've got to be thrilled. They're all on their phones, texting and tweeting, I'm sure, about this uh, remarkable moment for them. And it was not made any easier by Dave Lato's team. They gave them all they had today. And our Lynn Elmore is uh, standing by with our Big East championship coach. Go ahead, Lynn. Chris, remarkable moment for you guys, but didn't come easy. No, it didn't. You know, I, I think uh, Dave's done a tremendous job with their program, where he took it when they first took over. Uh, their kids played hard, played with a lot of energy. We weren't very good on offense. We didn't take care of the ball, which is ironic because it's all we worked on for two days. So maybe we had to shift our focus. But you know, we didn't we didn't give in mentally on the defensive end because of our turnovers. Uh, thank heavens they missed uh, those threes at the end, which were tough looks. Um, I'm proud of my guys. Well, walk us through that play. Uh, again, O'Mara getting Mercura off the high screen and him going back door. That's terrific execution. Yeah, you know, it's a little set that we put in uh, in the last week or so. Sean made a terrific pass. Wanted to come back to a different one that was similar for back door, but I got outvoted by my assistants. We end up turning it over, so... Um, who knows, but I'm, I'm glad we were able to get the uh, stop down the stretch. Well, one final question. History, how does it feel to finally get the outright championship in the regular season? Somebody other than Villanova, Xavier now goes down in the history book. Feels great. Now, obviously, they had our number this year, but, uh, you know, to go 18 games and through the gauntlet and be the team with the best record uh, won't give us any sugar when we head to the Big East Tournament at MSG. But I'm really proud of this group, our, our seniors. You know, they've been through the wars, and for them to be uh, standing here as Big East regular season champs, uh, I'm, I'm really happy for those guys. Well, congratulations on the New York. Thanks, Len. I appreciate it. All right. All right, Len. Many thanks, and a wonderful year for us. This was my ninth Xavier game to call this year. They won every one of them, and uh, this time they claimed the Big East outright title, 65 to 62. On to the Garden in New York, and you'll see it all on FS1 beginning Wednesday. More basketball coming today, though. Two more after the break, though. We'll take you to Rob Stone, Steve Lavin, and Casey Jacobson in our Los Angeles studios.